What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Scott Rafi, man. We are sitting down on my couch because, well, in the hotel and the resort because uh, something's wrong with my equipment, man. I don't know what it is. It's just like not cooperating with me. I just wanted to talk to you about what my experience here in Africa is my first time. I've been here already for three weeks, so I guess I'm kind of late with this. I know I did a video when I, f I think I did a video. Yeah, I did a video when I first got here. Some of the things that I noticed, and I'm learning as I go, I'm, I'm working here for three months. This probably is not my last time working in Africa. I'll probably be in another country in, you know, my next job in a few months, my next whatever uh, job, you know, consulting job I get. Uh, so, my experience here, uh, and I know I did a video, my last video, if it ever, if it uploaded, you'll see I took some pictures and I showed kind of what I saw and everything. Uh, Africa is not what you think. When I said I'm going to Africa. The first thing that came to people's minds is Wakanda, Black Panther. I don't know. I don't know why. Like if I say I'm going to New York, I'm not going to meet Spider Man. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway. Um, they said we're kind of like Panther. Some were kidding. I think some weren't. And then, and also they thought they think National Geographic, like everything in Africa. And I ain't gonna lie, I thought that too. Like National Geographic, everybody's running around in uh, elephants, and you know, <laughs> I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna see just tribes everywhere. Not at all. I seen more Galaxy S eights and S nines here than I think in the states than I have in the states. Uh, you know, selfies and Bluetooths and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's, it's another country. Uh, economically, of course, you know, they got differences. Each country has its own thing. This is not the United States, this country. Remember, Africa's a continent, not a, not a country. So there's different countries within that continent of Africa. So this particular country, Chad, is not, you know, it is not uh, as wealthy, of course, as the United States or any other big country. You know, uh, that is well off, is wealthy, the, you know, economically. Uh, it's very similar, like I've said before, to Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic, I remember, I have not been to DR in years since I was a kid, uh, probably 15, I think. I'm 38. I have not been in my country in a while, but it's very similar. It's exactly how I remember it. People selling stuff in the street. You know, um, the kids kids running up to you. You see a lot of little kids by themselves, playing by themselves. Just in groups, little little kids. They're probably like five, six years old, just running around on their own. And then going right back home, you know. Um, something that we don't see a lot. In the States, if the kid runs around, somebody's calling DCF on you, or the kid's going to get lost, or unfortunately he's going to get taken or something by somebody, you know. You know, things happen here. It's people steal, people do that. I haven't heard of any murder or any crime like I do in the States. Now, I've been watching, I've been trying to follow a little bit of the news see, and hear stories to see if, I, if there's any similarity. But here, it's not. I don't see, like... And, you know, and this is why I say to learn, to really learn about life, you got to travel. As far as crimes, you'll have thieves. It's thieves everywhere. You know, uh, if there's tourists here, you stand out. This isn't like a huge tourist destination. Uh, but if you want to see the world, you know, it's one of the places where you should stop. They have a lot of great, a lot of beautiful things here. I Me, mean, I'm culturally diverse. I like to see everything. I don't. I don't box myself into. Oh, I'm just, you know, just what's in the U.S. No, um, you know, I like to go everywhere and see everything, try everything. There's certain things I don't like, certain foods I don't agree with, certain things, uh, like, you know, the the you know uh, the the it's customary here to. Like when they get their meat, the the way they sell their food is in the street. You'll see a lot of vendors in the street. You'll see tables out, and you'll see the meat on there. You'll see fish, you know, stacked up and stuff. You won't see a lot of refrigerators. <laughs> okay, so that should tell you. Um, because they normally, the reason is they normally sell what they have on that table probably that day. They're, they're going to sell, you know, they don't have an abundance of stuff just out there to sell. And then the next day, 
you know, they normally, they'll have, you know, a few pieces of meat. And normally they know what people come in every day to buy. And they'll sell that. And then the next day, they'll, if they have to slaughter something, they're going to go ahead and slaughter it. That's the way I'm taking it. That's the way I'm seeing it. You'll see the meat hanging. And you see, in my last video, you'll see pictures that I took. And I put it up so you guys can see it. And I explained a little bit of it. Uh, people here need money. It's not like money is not abundant here. It's not like you can get it anywhere, pretty much like in the States. Uh, you know, you you got to give money for almost everything here. Um, like, I'm going to give you an example. My bags got lost in, in route over here in Paris. And uh, so one bag was in Atlanta. The other bag was in Paris. So... You know, they had to get my bags here. Two days later, I think, I had my bags two or three days later. Well, I had to go at night to go pick them up. They were going to close the airport. They closed the airport here. It closes. It's not 24 hours. It closes here. So at 9 o'clock, that airport was closing, and nobody's getting in. So I had the number of the lady who gets the bags, the customs or whatever they call them over here. And uh, she had called the hotel to say, Hey, we got the bags, you know, and it was like eight o'clock and she's like, well, I'm going to close at nine. So, you know, you can either, you know, come get them now before nine or you come tomorrow. Well, I needed them. I wanted them that day. So it was eight o'clock. I went down. They got me a, a customer, a uh, complimentary cab. I got on the cab. Uh... I have a driver, but he wasn't there. It was late at night. They got me the cab. I went over there. Uh, of course, I had to pay for parking. The part now, the <laughs> parking is not like a parking lot like you see in the states, where you know, everything, like you go in, there's a building, and you got to go through a gate and electronic take thing. You grab a ticket. It's just an area that's open. You go park. There's a dude there in a shed. They come out. They're like, "Hey, you want to park here? You gotta give me money." So I gave him five hundred CFA. That's like uh, like five. I think, uh, I don't know, like two or three dollars, I don't remember, 500 CIFA, whatever that is, two or three dollars, four dollars, whatever. And then I tipped, I had to give money to the driver, even though it was complimentary from the hotel because my bags got lost, I still had to give money to the driver because he was looking at me like I was an asshole. So I gave him money, I'm like, all right, here you go, bro, thanks. We went inside. Uh, they wanted to see my passport, the customs guy who checks the bags because you have to put your bags through a thing and they check everything you got. Well, he was going home. He didn't want to check anything. He takes my passport, looks at it, then he's holding it like this, right? I'm like, all right, give him my passport. And he's not giving it to me. He makes this gesture. And the guy that works there is like, hey, bro, he wants you to give him some money. I said, like, what the hell do I got to give him some money for? That's my passport. You know what I mean? And I was getting mad. Inside, I was heated, but I, I wanted my bags so bad. I had my bags, but he was like, look, he was like, give me money. I'm going to give you a passport. And I was like, yo, I, I could literally take this man and slam him. You know how the Hulk did to Loki? I, literally, I could, he was a little skinny guy. I was like, but you know, I was like, you know what? This is not my country. I was like, all right. I think I gave him like 20, 30 bucks. I swear. I mean, I must have made his day. He must have been like, yo, whatever he's got in that bag is important because normally they'll give him like five bucks or something. I gave him like 20, 30 bucks. Like, just give him, because I, I didn't have change. I'm not going to run around looking for change. At that point, you know, I'd been washing the same clothes for three days. You know what I mean? I had to buy a toothbrush, toothpaste, and all that stuff. You know, wearing the same clothes. I didn't have none of my stuff. I was like, yo. I just took my bags, but things like that, you know, you know, they help you with your bags from the supermarket, which is called a modern market, not supermarket here, modern market to the car. You got to give them something, you know what I mean? Because they'll stand there looking at you like you're crazy. You know, you got the kids that come up to your car everywhere you parked, selling you all kinds of stuff. On the weekends, I get ballsy and... Me and my me and my boy, we like we ask our driver to just take us out to see. You know what I mean? We don't get out of the car, but we go out to see. And that's my last video. What I talked about and those pictures I showed you is I got out of the 
city limits where I'm at, right? The little, you know, the area where I'm at, the city. And I went out to see um, how they live out there, how they really live, you know? Like, not people in apartments. I've seen that. People in resorts or, you know, pools and stuff. Like, I've seen that. I'm talking about how they really live. Somebody out there who's not in the city who's, you know, you got to get their food from the local. They got a little, I passed by what I call a butcher alley. It was like a road, the main road, and it was like all kinds of stuff on that road, man. They have selling, they had just meat, hanging out, just chilling, uh, goat heads and all that stuff and everything. Then they had a part where it was just like mechanic shops and not like buildings. It was like in the open, but it would have like four wooden sticks. They make like a little shelter. And they've got all kinds of car parts just stacked up in a mountain, not even like in shelves, just a mountain of parts there, parts on the floor, engines just thrown, and they'll replace your stuff with that engine or with those parts, you know, they'll be like, oh yeah, I got, I, I don't know how they find anything there, I mean, every, every everybody knows their own mess, you know, um, they have their regular mechanic shops here. Not saying that that's all, but in those parts like that where you get out and you actually see the the commune, you know, the how the people live is there's those is those types of shops, you know, those types of things that they got out there. There's a gentleman at work who's uh, he's a captain and he's from here, and he's traveled everywhere, he knows a lot of stuff. He can tell you a lot of stuff about the U.S. He knows a lot of history. And he was telling, he was showing me uh, some history about here. And it's crazy. Okay, things that blew my mind because I would have never, I never learned that in the States. They never teach me that. And I might put this, uh, I might do another video for Instagram video, IGTV. So you can check me out over there. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. And I'll see you on the next smoke.